Hello, welcome to English 3, Unit 6, Part 1, with me, Professor Neil, and my TA. Yonghee, hello everyone. Hello, I hope you like my fish. Alright, the cat, kitty certainly is very impressed by the fish. Is kitty it? loves fish. Yes, but it should not touch the fish. Don't touch the fish. It's, Are you sure? It's forbidden. It is forbidden. Okay. It is forbidden. You see? Forbidden. Because that's one of the words we're learning today. Penalties. Prohibited. Kitty is forbidden from touching the fish. I love fish. So yes, going back. Forbidden. Don't touch the fish. Mm. Yeah, sorry about that. There are signs telling you not to do this. But what sort of places do they tell you to do that? Well, we're going to talk about that now. All right. First, we're going to look at the signs. Where might the signs be found that stop people? Signs and places. That's our warm-up. There are many signs in the world, and these signs are quite negative. The ones telling you not, not to do something. So we have our question. Where might these signs be found? Oh, wait, I need to, uh, to be ready to write down. Okay, because there's a lot to take into this. It's very important that you understand the starter because we'll be using the grammar, the vocabulary, and everything from this starter for the next 10 minutes or so at least. So, where might these signs be found? Where might these signs be found? So, I'm going to ask Yonghee. I have my own ideas, which will come up in the video, and then Yonghee will add her own ideas. Right, because they can be found in more than one place. So, this sign might be found in. So, this sign being number one. So, where might this you might you find this sign? Classroom. A classroom. Restaurant. Yes. So, yeah. Maybe in a classroom. But I taught in many classrooms. I haven't seen many no smoking signs in classrooms. Students... I just sort of know not to smoke in classrooms. But maybe in Korea they smoke in the classroom. I don't know. But uh, restaurants in the last few years have banned smoking and said no smoking in the restaurant. How about the one with the dog? Where might you find a sign that says no pets, no dogs? Restaurant. Yes, a restaurant or... A uh, hotel. A hotel, yes. Or... Mm. So many places. Yes, yeah, so many places. Maybe a park, huh? if they're not allowed on the grass. All right. Or more likely a shop. Why not? I don't know. It's my idea. The book doesn't give. Okay. What about the camera? Where might you not be allowed to take pictures? Museum. Museum is the most likely place. They don't like you taking pictures of their pictures. And where might you not be allowed to use? Museum. Yes, or... Or cinema. Yes. They're both good guesses. People don't like it if people use their phones in these places. I hate, I hate prohibited, it. Prohibited. Forbidden. Especially smartphone lights. The who are sitting in front of me. Oh, I hate it because it blocks my view to the screen. A personal hate. Okay, what about the next sign? Mm, road. Possibly in the road. No walking in the road. Or private property. I've never been to private property. Yes, it's quite common in the United Kingdom. Mm. There are certain places where you're just not allowed to go. And number six. What is that? I can't even recognize what it is. It's a slipper. Or a banana. But I think it's a slipper. You're not allowed to wear slippers. Maybe a department store. Why not? <laughs> Many people wear slippers. <laughs> Again, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying you've got to be properly dressed. Properly dressed. So where would you have to take your uh, watch and key out? Mm, maybe when you go to police checkup. Police checkup, or when you're at the airport. Ah, airport. When they have to when when, when you go like the, a the metal detector. Yeah, yes. metal detector. Lastly, where would you not be allowed to take food? Cinema. Yes, cinema again, or library. Or library, museum. That's why these days we go to study cafe. Okay, so pay attention to these places. You might have your own ideas. These are some examples that we've thought up. 
right on places where you're not allowed to do these things and they're these places are going to be used again in the grammar and writing sections so those are the signs that's the warm-up that's the places so starter signs it also says up here identify and underline the past participles for, and write the regular or irregular for the verb so the first one I'll do for you smoking is strictly forbidden this is irregular yes irregular so we have an I that's an I for uh, I means irregular I means irregular so Yongi, in the next one pets are not allowed on the premises uh, allowed is uh, regular because it has ed at the end of the verb yeah so if you see ed regular r for regular taking pictures is prohibited mm, this is regular because it has ed at the end of the verb prohibit which means ban not allowed not allowed cell phones must be set to silent mode Set, the verb is irregular because it changes set, set, set. Yes, there's no ed. Trespassers will be prosecuted. Mm, this is also regular because you can see the verb prosecute takes ed at the end of this form. What is a trespasser? Trespasser is someone crosses someone else's places without permission, illegally. Yeah. I've done that in Korea. I uh, mean uh, military job? Yes, and then they chase me away. Ooh. Proper footwear must be worn at all times. Number six. Uh, there is a verb, uh, worn. This verb, worn's original form is wear. Mm -hmm. Wear, were, worn. It doesn't take ed at the end, no. so it's irregular. Irregular. Ooh, gets a ping, that one. Because I got it right. Yes. Number seven, metal objects should be removed before entry. Remove takes ed at the end, so this is uh, regular. And the last one, no outside food may be brought inside. Uh, brought is the verb, but it doesn't have ed form. Instead, it get irregular form, so it's irregular. Because it's supposed to be bring, brought, brought. So one last question about irregular, regular, Yonghee. Mm -hmm. How do you know if a verb is regular or irregular? Mm, you have to memorize them. Yes, so that's... Unfortunately. That's the only option, folks, out there. You have to memorize these as regular or irregular. If you don't know if a verb is regular or irregular, if you don't know, just make it regular until someone corrects you. If you don't know, just always make it regular. If I give a bright side, a uh, relatively very small percentage of English verbs are irregular. Yeah. So don't worry. But unfortunately, for in, in English books, they always seem to find all the irregular examples. <laughs> Onwards and forwards. Ooh, Ooh bright. Si signs for saying, get a move on. All right, so... You notice here, it mentioned past participles, and it's talking about regular or irregular. And this sentence is written, strict, smoking is strictly forbidden. It's got the be verb. They've all got the be verb in them. Because today's grammar point is active versus passive sentences. In English, we have active sentences. A fireman has saved the boy. And we have passive sentences. The boy has been saved by a fireman. They basically say the same thing, but they're just written in different styles. One goes forward, the other one goes backwards. So you can see here, it's almost like a palindrome. You've got the boy. The boy is at the end here, and here it's at the front. Here fireman is at the front, here it's at the back. And the verb form changes a little bit because the B verb, the B gets popped in there into the passive voice and English books like to test you on the ability to recognize these sentences and change them around and that's what we're going to practice now with these sentences these sentences are in the passive form so smoking is strictly forbidden is in the passive form and 
The idea here is to try and put it into regular form, into active form. So f I'll do the first one for you. So you have to. So before we talked about the place where this could happen. Well, one place is by the cinema. So the place it could happen. So smoking is strictly forbidden by the cinema. And so the cinema becomes the subject of of the active form here. The cinema strictly forbids smoking. So our passive form and our active form are kind of like a reflection, a mirror reflection of each other. So the top one, the passive, smoking is at the beginning. You can see here it's at the end in the active form. And the cinema is at the end of the passive form but the beginning of the active form. So it's almost like a mirror. The only thing that changes properly is the verb. And the and B verb is not in the active form. And the difference between active and passive, when you look at the active form, the actor is the cinema, which is subject position. And smoking is opposite, which is a target of what cinema wants to forbid. However, if they want to emphasize smoking, they want to move object smoking to the subject position, which you can see in a passive sentence, smoking is at the beginning of a sentence. Therefore, the verb form changes from forbid to is forbidden, because smoking is originally object, not subject. They want to identify the difference. However, smoking is not an actor, so the original actor, the cinema, should be identified by, by the cinema. That Thank is a passive form. Thank you, Yonghee. We've got another 90 slides to go through, so it's <laughs> going to be quite a long video. All right, so I'll give you the passive form. So, Yonghee, what is the active form? You have to find... So I'll give you the shop. The subject always. Mm -hmm. So the shop uh, doesn't allow pets on the premises. Very good, Yongi. Yes, difficult one that. But again, they are reflective of each other. But here you needed the shop. Uh, it does not allow pets on the premises. Because in the passive, you frequently. Uh, delete original subject. Yeah. You have to find the subject to change passive sentence into active form. Okay, good. So, taking pictures is prohibited. You have to find the subject, guess the museum. Mm -hmm. Then you can do the museum prohibit taking pictures. Yeah. That's our passive versus our active voice sentence. Number four. Again, you need to find who acts on this. So the audience must set cell phones to silent mode. Good. So take notes, take notes, because this is, you want to practice this because obviously homework is coming, homework bit is coming. So, as I say, trespassers will be prosecuted by the government. Here we already given the original subject by by the government. So we can take that one. The government, the government will prosecute trespassers. So if we have uh, the uh, by noun phrases as a given, then it's easier to change passive sentence into active form. So all the ones from now on will be homework. Yonghee gave you number five, if you were listening. And we've given you the subject for the active voice. So the customer. And you just have to turn it into act in for homework, you're gonna have to turn them into active. Active sentences. We've got the passive sentence. 
homework is the active sentence. I've given you the actor, the passenger. Number eight, no help. No outside food may be brought inside. So here, I have not given you the actor. You will have to come up with your own. If you were paying attention earlier, then you already have an actor. You have to find a subject. For the active sentence. That's the beginning. That's just the starter. All right, so we've got signs. We're going to look at the dialogue now. And again, the dialogue is about a new phone. It's about new phones. Oh, pretty phone. Pretty phone, yes. Ring, 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 ring. So first thing we're going to do is read the dialogue. And then we're going to look at the passive sentences in the dialogue. So, Yonghee, you are Marty and I'll be Chris. Mm, shall we begin? Yes. Is that a new phone? How did you afford it? I didn't. It was bought by my parents. You're so lucky. What are you talking about? You were given your phone too. Yes, but mine is already three years old. Why don't you ask for a new one? It's pointless. Upgrading phones is considered a waste of money by my dad. He bought you your last phone, didn't he? Actually, this phone was given to me by my grandmother. Then I suggest you start saving some money. Oh, I need an iPhone 12. iPhone 12. A bit of advertising there. Or Galaxy. Galaxy. Okay. <laughs> new, any new one. Any new phone. All right, so that's the dialogue. We did the listening. Now, we're going to look at the active and passive sentences in this dialogue. So, Yonghee, the sentences in this dialogue, are they active or passive? Mixed. But okay, the, the ones in yellow. The ones uh, highlighted in yellow, they are passive. They are all passive sentences. Okay. So as you know, usually what we want you to do is turn passive sentences into active sentences. So we're going to do that by asking Yonghee some questions. Who gave Chris his phone? Mm, his parents gave him his phone. Very good. The next question, who gave Marty his phone? Mm, his grandmother gave him his phone. Yes, his grandmother gave him his phone. And then we have, who considers upgrading phones is a waste of money? Uh, Marty's dad considers upgrading phone a waste of money. Very good, Yonghee. So these sentences are in active voice. So just by asking the questions about passive sentences, you can reply with active sentences. So it is useful to learn both forms of sentence when you're learning English because they sort of act together in giving people information. Active voice and passive voice are a sort of reflection of each other, like a mirror. So that was the new phone dialogue, and we'll come back to that after looking at the grammar, possibly. In the grammar, do we need to mention the grammar at the moment? I think earlier we. I think we yes. I think we've already explained the grammar. So active voice, as we said. The point here we want to highlight is the V, the verb section. Okay, so active and passive, the verb section is the different, the main difference between each part. Of course, we said subject and object will change places. So in the active voice, Yonghee, in the first sentence, a fireman ha has saved the boy. What is the V section of this sentence? So we call it the... Um predicate. Mm -hmm. So, had saved, had saved mm -hmm. is a full verb phrase section. Mm -hmm. And because of a had auxiliary verb, it is a present perfect and tense. 
What about in the next sentence? Next sentence is uh, relatively easier because it has only one element, gave, and simple past tense. And the last one? This one has uh, consider, which is a simple present, present tense. There is no S at the end of this verb because the police is a collective plural form. Very good, Yong Hee. So yes, we've looked this each bit that here in the book. It describes as being the V, the, the verb or predicate within the sentence. So in the passive sentence, what is the here? It talks about the B plus PP. What is PP, Yong Hee? Past participle, which uh, used to make uh, perfect tense and uh, or passive form of English sentences. So something like uh, saved and uh, given and considered are the passive participle form of English verb. But ed, save, uh, gets the ed to make that form. So it's regular. So in this sentence, what is the verb phrase? Verb phrase is has been saved, Very been good. saved. So in the next sentence, I was given this book. Uh, was given. Was given, and then? The next one is was given to. Yes. And the final one is is considered. Is considered. So those are the verb points, and they are the, often the bits that you have to pay attention to when dealing with active and passive voice, right? Just to make them change from active to passive, and also switching the subject and object around. When the uh, sentence has a be and past participle form, the uh, English noun at the beginning are considered to be object from the active sentence. Good. Okay. So that's the end of the grammar. Just the last thing to do, we're going to go through the speaking one, unfortunate events. So unfortunate means unlucky. So maybe if you play card games or gambling, you are unlucky, like me. Yeah, unlucky to have to study grammar. Yes, but we've done the grammar and now we're going to start practicing it. We're going to start practicing it with speaking one and then we'll take a break before we go to speaking two. Take turns asking and answering questions about the events. Change the active clauses to passive clauses. So all these clauses are in active form. They're active and you have to change them to passive. So let's do the first one. A cat killed a bird. Then a cat killed a bird. So act this though. It is active uh, sentence. Mm -hmm. However, if you're looking at the uh, bird, that bird is killed by a cat. Yes. Bird was killed by a cat. And see, I put parenthesis around a cat because it's optional now, as they showed in the examples in the book. They use passive to hide killer. Yes. Ah, which makes it a murder mystery. Kitty's like, oh, this is how <laughs> Who I... Who killed the bird? We don't know. <laughs> this is how I get away with it. <laughs> All right, so the next one, we've got a thief stole a wallet. That's the active sentence. And so, Yonghee, what is the passive? Hmm. A wallet uh, was stolen by a thief. Yes, a wallet was stolen by a thief is passive. Yes, yeah, so if you say a wallet was stolen, you don't know who is the thief. So notice here, this one is stole, this one was stolen. And they're in past tense now, they're in past tense. Because a stole is past form of verb steal. Yeah, so it happened in the past. Oh, catch him, thief, go, go, go. We've got a bus hit a car, that is the active sentence. And then the passive one is, Yonghi? A car is hit a bus by a bus, or you can, a car was hit. A bus was hit by, by a, by a car. Mm. But it's confusing the verb hit, because hit, uh, past, uh, past participle form is all the same. Yes, it could be, it mm. could be. 
，就是有 hit hit hit。It's not regular. So irregular verbs are difficult. A virus crashed a computer.、Mm. A computer was crashed by a virus. Ooh, ooh, that was homework. Very good, Yonghee. You've done the homework for them. Okay, without even knowing it. So yes,、yeah, some more homework for you guys. We like to be consistent. A bee stung a boy. Oh, hey, you want to give them some help? Yeah,、uh, stung is the past form of the verb sting. So what? Sting, stung, stung. So what passive sentence would you do? Uh, then a boy was stung by a bee. Yes, last one's homework. And the last one. If you just give them a passive sentence. Okay, a flight was cancelled by an airline. Very good. There you go, folks. That was the unfortunate event. Unfortunate because there was a lot of homework in there. There was a lot of grammar, but hopefully it will help you to become better English speakers, better English writers, and that's our target. Wish you luck. Fingers crossed. Yep. So thank you for joining us for English three. This is the end of part one. This is goodbye from Professor Neil and his TA Yonghee. See you at the part two. Bye. Bye. Bye.